Okay, so I've got a Classic 30 uh, amp, PV Classic 30, and uh, I looked around to get one of them tube tamers, and I really couldn't find any. Um, so, if, if uh, those of you that have been following my videos, you know I really like to make a lot of stuff myself. So, I decided to put up a video on how to make a tube tamer. And basically what this is, is um, on the Classic 30s and probably the Classic 50s too, they both are both, and the uh, the Delta Blues amp, they're both, ba they're both basically the same amp. One's pushing 50 watts, the other's pushing 30, approximately, but they call it 50 or 30 watts. And so what it is, the tubes are, are upside down in the amplifier. And they tend to vibrate. And this device holds the tubes up into, up into the amplifier. It keeps them from vibrating. Now, some of them have little wire clips, and I guess that would help too. But this particular device has a... Um, I'm going to use silicone grommets. So it's going to be like a rubber cushion up against the glass tube. Like, like the original tube tamer. It's a really a very simple design. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to make one, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Okay, cool. All right, this is basically what you need. You need a spring, silicone grommets. I bought these. These were like five bucks. I got them on eBay. I just typed in silicone grommets. I got a sight. The outside diameter. The outside diameter of these is five eighths of an inch. The inside diameter is a quarter of an inch. Okay. The groove inside the um, grommet is an eighth of an inch. Okay. So basically, let me let me show you. If if you were to look, how am I going to do this? All right. If you were to look at the at the side of the grommet, it would look like this. Okay, this is a real bad drawing. All right, and then inside here, that's the hole. All right, now let me show you. Let me get one out here. Okay, see what I'm trying to say here. Right there. Now that groove is an eighth of an inch. This metal tubing is about an eighth of an inch thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill holes in there, and then I'm going to push this in there. So that I get this to stand up. You see how it, it's going to fit in there? The metal will fit inside that, and there'll be there's four tubes, so there's going to be four of these grommets, and they're going to be placed so that the center of the tube, the top of the tube, fits right into the grommet. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to need we're going to need uh, put the marker away. We're going to need four of these guys. Two, I think it was either ten of them or no, I think I got ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's ten of them for four bucks. So, or five bucks, I don't know. Now I measured the I measured the tubes, and they were an inch and three quarters apart. Okay. So on the top of this metal tubing. I've got to drill four holes an inch and three quarter apart. Okay? Now, what I have to do, the, the, what, the work I have to do here is I have to cut this. I only need a, a small piece of this tubing. I only need... Stand this thing up. So I'm going to cut it. So... 
it's I'm going to cut it right about there and right about there so I'm going to end up with a u-shaped channel okay so it'll kind of look like this Okay, and the, and the bottom half of it I don't need. The bottom half will look like that. I can save the... It'll look like that. Now I can cut another one like down here. Out, out of the other half. It's, it's going to be actually more than half. I'm only going to have this probably about... Maybe 5 sixteenths or a quarter of an inch tall. But I got another section down here. I could do the same thing. So I could actually make two tube, tam tube tamers out of this piece of tubing. And this is this is a piece. Um, this is like one by I don't know inch and a half, inch and a quarter, something like that. So I'm gonna slice. I'm gonna slice it right down there and. On the same thing on the other side, and I, I could probably slice it again on this side, and then I could use this half and this half. Now, getting back to the drawing, with with the with the holes drilled every inch and three quarter, in three quarters, I need a total piece. I, I measured the amp, and I believe it was six and five sixteenths. Six and five sixteenths long okay and then I'll, and then I'm, then I'll drill the four holes there centered center the four holes spacing on that six and five sixteenths long piece then I'm going to add a little hole on the very end and you're going to put a spring here a spring here or Probably look better if I put the spring going down to the chassis, so it'll be it'll be like that. Part class here, okay, and then the spring will go down and down on the other side. And at the bottom, at the tube socket, the outer tube sockets, they have these little ears, these little tabs that the wires were clamped into that held the tube in well that's what I'm going to run the spring to okay so that one goes to and this one goes to the so it'll be four tubes and the fourth one will be down there All right, and then in, in here will be the four grommets see and that spring tension will just hold the grommets up against the tubes which will hold the tubes into the amplifier and the rubber grommets will actually insulate it from vibration so that's what I'm going to make cool okay now I drew one line on that side that's where I'm that's where I'm going to cut it okay and I did that I didn't I didn't use a ruler but it's re relatively straight so Let's see. There's a there's a dot where the line is. See the line lines up with that. So the line is over here, about the same height. Okay. Now I'll show you how I do this. Set your finger up, and you go like that. Okay. So you draw a line. There. Okay, so now I'll just cut along that line. Not that one. I was, I was looking at the camera and I started going up. But anyways, you get the point. Okay, you see what I'm trying to do? I'm going to end up with a small channel right there. And I just cut it. I just cut it to, to be six and five sixteenths inches long. Drill the four holes for the two grommets, and then two little holes on the end for the spring. 
and uh, it's 90% done. All right, time to cut. All right, I used the, uh, the small cutter. There it is. There's, there's my channel. Okay, and you can see I can use the, the other side. Ouch, boy, this is getting hot. Ooh. Okay, I can cut another one on the other side to make a, a second one if I want. But that's all I did. I mean, you could use a, a sawzall or a hacksaw, whatever. Um, the reason why I use the tubing because it, it, it was... It was approximately the right width. I had this piece of scrap lying around it, and it's the right, about the right width I wanted. And it had, it had sides to it. And what's important about that is, when you have, when you have sides, this piece and that piece, it helps. It helps prevent it from bending. So if I got the tubes in the middle and I'm pulling down the side, granted it might not be a lot of tension, but this flat piece of metal will tend to stay flat because of these sides here. I mean, you can try, you can try just a regular flat piece of metal, I suppose. Um, just, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it would stay flat, and I'm thinking that maybe it might um, it might bow, and then you got less tension in the middle and more on the ends. So that's why I wanted a piece of channel. You can use anything, aluminum, um, you know, whatever you can find. But I'm just going to clean this up, deburr it, get, get rid of all the sharp edges, and I'll be right back. Okay, with the... Uh, a 60 grit or 80 grit does doesn't matter. I, I think this is a kind of a worn 60 grit. I just cleaned it up a little bit, took all the sharp edges off. All right, and now now I'm going to drill drill my holes, and we'll be almost done. There it is. Okay, so I need four grommets an inch and three quarters apart for a total spacing of five and a quarter inches because I want this centered I want to know how much in to drill the first hole so if the overall piece of the metal is five I mean six and uh, five sixteenths and in decimal form that's six point three one two and the spacing is five and a quarter. Decimally, that's 5.250. I subtract the two, and I get 1.062, which come, breaks down to an inch and a sixteenth. Now, I, I, that means I have an inch and a, inch and a sixteenth of an inch of this metal left after that space there has been taken up. But I want it equally on either side. So I have to take that inch and the sixteenth and divide it by two. And that gives me 531. So if that's a six if sixty-two thousandths is a sixteenth, then thirty-one is a half of a sixteenth or a thirty-second. A half of an inch is five point five is five hundred thousandths. That's a half of an inch. So it's a half inch plus a thirty second. So I gotta go five hundred and thirty one thousandths in. Now thirty one thousandths is you know it's a thirty second of an inch. So I'm just gonna guesstimate that. I'll do about I'll do a half inch on either side or actually, you know what? I'll just take a half inch in, then go mark, go over a thirty-second, make my first hole mark, then go an inch and three-quarter from that, and then an inch and three-quarter from that, and then an inch and three-quarter from that, and that should be close enough. Okay. Now I'm going to read this. That's 
Um, hold that. Let's see if I can read this here. I can't even see it. Okay, there's. That's zero, all right. And there's a hundred thousandths, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. There's five hundred, five ten, five twenty, five. That's about five thirty-two, but that's close enough. Five thirty-two. So now what I'll do is I'll just scratch a line here, 532 there, 532 there, and then go an inch and three quarter in, and I should, and when I get to the last inch and three quarter, it should be, should be really close to that last, last scribe. So that's what I'm going to do. And this is a, this is a vernier caliper. This will measure up to 12 inches and in breaks it down into thousandths of an inch. Okay, so that's what I use. Okay, I've got them marked. I'm going to put a punch on there, on there. here and one right there so there's my four holes for the grommets I'll have a grommet sit there one will sit there one will sit there and the last one will sit there okay now I'm going to drill the holes okay so now I've got the I've got the four holes drilled and deburred, and now I'm just pushing in the grommets. And that goes in like that. That's the other side. And I just push this in here like that. Now the reason why I use silicone. It's because the tubes get really hot. And if you use this, just the regular uh, black rubber grommets, they'll melt. Because it, these are good for 400 degrees. And the tubes get really, really hot. I, for, I forget what the temperature that the tubes will get at. But uh, not, only, not only did I go for the silicone because it, they're rated for a higher temperature, but... Um, I also mounted a fan on another video. I mounted a fan on the back of the amp so they, it'll stay cool. So I, will, I won't have any trouble at all. I mean, you don't have to mount a fan. You can get one of those little 10-inch desktop fans and just put it in the back of the, behind the amp on the ground. And it doesn't take much to, to keep this amp cool because mine would get so hot you couldn't even touch where the controls were. They got so hot. But uh, there it is, and like I say, now all I have to do is drill a small hole there and a small hole at this end for the spring to hook on, and then the other end of the spring will hook onto the little tab underneath uh, by the side of the tube. There were two tabs, and that's where they originally had the wires that clipped on and held, held the tube in place. Well, I'm going to take the wires off, and I'm going to use... Uh, I'm going to use the spring on the outer two. I'll probably leave the, I can leave the clips on the two center tubes. So, so, so far so good, huh? And there it is. Okay. Now what I did was I went upstairs where the amp is. And this is the tube. And this is the bottom of the tube. And these, these little tabs come up. And there's a little hole in there. And the wire clip goes in there and it comes up over the top of the tube and then there and you snap you move it over to the top you clip it on and that helps hold the tube in too so what I did was I took the, the clip off and I measured from where from where the tube support 
I'll, I'll start calling it tube support, okay? Anti-vibration tube support there, okay? Where that hole on the tab was to the to the uh, the tube support was two and a half inches, okay? So now I gotta have two springs that when they're stretched with tension, it'll be two and a half. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Okay, now all this is is just a piece of angle iron in the vise. And if you want to um, change the length of a spring, this is what you do. You take, let me get a hammer here. Okay, watch this. Now this isn't much of a sharp edge, it's kind of rounded off. But you need, you need an edge to, there's a 90. All right, say I wanted it there. Put it right there and ha tap it with a hammer. Okay. And you take a pair of cutting pliers. it up a little bit It'd probably help if you had a sharp pair of cutting pliers huh but you get the idea like that and there's your spring okay and you just put it and just hit it okay and that's how that works Let's see if you can you really make that out. I guess you can, huh? Let me zoom it in a little bit more. It's basically you you just hit it against the 90 degree sharp edge, and you can make another spring. Now I need a spring that's going to be two and a half inches from this end to that end, with some tension on it. Now I marked off two and a half inches, and this is just a, a little long by about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to move it up some. Uh, I need a. Just cut this off and see if that's going to be long enough. Get that out of the way so I can cut it. Problem is, these cutters are dull, and I need to cut it up in the edge here where they're sharp. And to get in there, I gotta get really close to this. There. Okay. Let's bring this back to where it's supposed to be. And let's put one end. And that's still a little bit too long. It's still a little bit too long from there to there. It's still off a little bit more. So I got to just keep moving up. I got to move up a little bit more. Let me see if I can get. It might be a sharper edge there. this out of the way. And get this out of the way and get my hands to work here. 
There we go. Okay. I'll just bring it back. And let's see what we got. Now, without being stretched, it's right about where I want it. So I gotta go just a hair more. I gotta keep going. Keep going. Let's try this way again. It has a sharper edge. But see, it's not... The 90 should go this way. This edge here has to be really sharp. That's what. That's why I'm having a problem with splitting it. If it was like a really sharp edge, you could bang it on. It, it opens up the spring real easy. Okay, that's. I think that'll work. We gotta get this to bend out a little bit. You know, a decent pair of pliers on this. And those aren't working. Get another pair. Okay, let's get this. Open that a little bit. Get this. Okay, so from there to there. Now I've got a about a little less than a quarter of an inch, say three sixteenths of an inch when it's relaxed. So I could pull it out. And that's gonna be it'll have some tension on it. And that'll be good. Okay, so I'm going to make another one this size. If I had a pair of needle nose pliers, that would be better. So we're going to go to there. Mark that. so I can get the cutters in there. got the two springs to use to hold that uh, tube stabilizer in place. Alrighty. Now let's go put it in. See how it fits the amp. Cool. Okay. Now I put the tube, the springs, on the little tab that holds the clip. See, see this tube still has the wire that goes into that little clip. And the one on this side, I got the spring on that one. And now you lift it up. Now the one I'm a little concerned about here is see how it's not stable so I may have to put it, it can rock this way and that way but it's still pushing down on it which which is good but what I, I think I will we'll do is I'll t cut two more springs one to go from one side of it and one to go the other side so it'll help hold it straight like that because the way this is now see it's on an angle there's nothing, if I get two springs, one on this side and one on this side, that'll help hold it down. I think that would be better. 
but that's uh, that's it. Got my tubes in. Doesn't quite uh, doesn't quite sit level. I'm a little disappointed in that, but that's because I've got nothing. Uh, let me try something here. Hold on. Okay, this is what I did. Instead of having instead of having the spring in the middle, I moved it to this side over here. And then the one on this side, I took it out of the center and I moved it to that side. So that way I got one pulling down in this corner and one pulling down on this corner and that that's holding it that's holding it level. So that's what I'll do. I'll just drill instead of running four springs, I'll run two springs, one in this corner and one on this corner, like opposite corners. And that'll equal the the pull and hold it straight. And that's it. I also put uh, these uh, silicone O-rings around the middle of the glass to help keep the tubes from rattling and making noise. Cool. You hear that? Somebody shooting fireworks. Or shooting a shotgun, one or the other. But that's it. Awesome.